What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to Car Salon with your boy Amir in another episode of Discussion in the Driveway. And if you haven't considered doing so already, subscribe to the channel, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you're part of the Car Salon family because the content is going to keep on coming as long as these lungs can breathe. Stay corona free, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Health is the most important thing. Everything else comes after. Definitely smash that like button after this video is over because you're definitely going to enjoy it. Fun times. Spring is here. First few days of spring. Happy spring, everybody. The equinox and all the good stuff ahead. Hopefully, good times coming ahead and we get past this corona and whatever all this media hype that's going on and just take care of yourselves stay healthy stay hydrated and just stay active what can you do in these tough times just gotta wait for the storm to pass today's topic of discussion is a few things on the bmw e60 of my own that i have and also slash bmw m5 e60 that I'm considering hopefully one day purchasing and see what happens in the future and what y'all think. So definitely I want comments down below on opinions and what everybody thinks on that car. On my own vehicle, I did a tune-up not too long ago. I changed six spark plugs and two ignition coils in the car because I had a cylinder five misfire. Everything seems to be running beautifully now except for i might have a vacuum leak because on cold days it tends to misfire slightly but when i reset the check light it tends to go and once the car is heated up and reached you know optimal running temperature that uh the car is running properly and it doesn't misfire so I'm thinking as the car heats up the gasket expands and seals up whatever air is coming through and it you know clears up the holes so that's why there's no misfire at that time once it heats up and reaches the operating temperature so I might have to do a valve cover gasket service in the future might not but I'm thinking I might because one of the spark plugs that I did remove from the vehicle had oil. So that seal might be not good. Hopefully in the future we'll see what happens. But for now I'm just going to leave it as it is because it is running properly. And it's not giving me any crazy headaches. And also another thing is that the water pump I told you in a few videos prior. That the water pump and thermostat had gone. And I purchased the water pump and thermostat from no other than fcpeuro.com because of their lifetime replacement warranty and I've heard that these electric water pumps and electric thermostats wear over time usually they go between 60,000 to 70,000 miles I don't know that yet because I haven't owned the car for that many miles so I will see in the future if I do need a next pump then we're going to definitely get that one replaced for free due to the lifetime replacement warranty thank goodness to fcp euro over there so that's the reason why i purchased it and delayed it a bit because my shop said that we can get it done the same day but i would have paid a little more than a hundred dollars more for the parts and i wouldn't have them warranted. so i figured if i'm gonna be spending a thousand dollars every sixty thousand miles why not just spend it on a few hundred or even do the labor myself and unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage for the car because it was in the shop and because of legalities or insurance purposes for the shop, I couldn't record a YouTube video. So all in all, it wouldn't have been easy to do in the driveway because you definitely need a lift. Just positionings, angles, it's not easy to do in a driveway. If it takes two to five hours in a shop it's going to take you an easy 10 hours in a driveway because you don't have the right amount of angle room when you're on the ground 
the water pump unfortunately and thermostat are way below the engine and you got to take off the front cover the the lower front cover for where you you usually don't even need to take that off for your oil change but you got to take off the metal plate in the front and you also got to take off the huge uh felt i'm like looking behind me i don't know why i feel like i'm underneath the car as a mechanic you know you have that kind of instinct but you take off the huge felt it looks like almost a backwards y kind of like letter y it has a weird shape like it goes it's a very long piece that almost goes all the way back to the rear end very very close like literally right above the resonator you drop that felt piece because there's certain things that you need to get on this end so you just have it nice and open and you see everything beautifully it's a very tough service honestly and i was like i'm not gonna do this in the driveway the car was towed to my shop that i worked at and it was just much easier there i was like no headache we banged it out in two hours dropped the antifreeze mixed it with the new coolant that came with the fcp euro package which was the bmw one that you need to mix with water to get the 50 50 ratio or you could do 60 40 depending on where your climate is in the world but 50 50 is usually good for new york and that being said it wouldn't have been a good diy project that would have been a disaster so i decided that forget it we're just going to do it at the shop and although i've seen youtube videos of people say yeah it's easy to be done this and that yeah maybe for someone that's thinner or more slim but someone like me that's a heavier person that while getting underneath the car when the car is on ramps i don't have that much space at all i wouldn't have been able to take off none of that stuff you have to have the car raised in the air a good four feet easy four feet to possibly somehow have more comfort while performing the service in order to actually get it done in a proper amount of time and not be so frustrated that oh my gosh this is going to carry on the two days certain diy projects are possible and and you know a thing that you can do in your driveway and it's one two three like pads brakes stuff like that is one two three you can do oil changes all day long some more intuitive things like that i just wouldn't recommend if you have friends that have shops or a lift in their driveway or in their garage let's say at home it's definitely worth it to do it that way better with a lift than without <coughs> excuse me only because more comfort ease of mind less headache that being said I've owned this car since 2018, August. I purchased it for a very cheap price. It's a very clean car. It's never been in an accident, thank goodness. Never been painted. I checked all the panels. The panels have never been painted. It's original paint. The car, all I did since brand new ownership of, I'm sorry, since ownership of this car in 2018, I've done a few oil changes, which is regular routine maintenance, a set of tires, since then around like a month later after i owned it i bought a set of tires due to the fact that i'm in new york and the car came with summer tires dunlops which i sold off on let on the let go app and basically broke even by buying the new tires because i bought the new tires i believe for 300 and installed them for 50 bucks at mavis down the block from my house and just i broke even because i sold the old used ones for 200 in the rears because those tires, brand new, are like 400 each. So I sold the rears for 200 I believe. A person bought a set for the 200 And I purchased and I sold the fronts, I believe, for 100 or $120. I don't remember it exactly. But I pretty much broke even for the new set of tires. And that being said, the tires have been great. It's, even though it's a staggered setup, I can't, because it's a rear-wheel drive, I can't really rotate the tires because you're not supposed to. It's different size tires. I've noticed a front itsy bitsy little bubble in the left front tire of the driver's side. And it's just not that bad. I don't think it's going to be an issue. If it is, whatever, I'll change the tire. That's not a bit an issue. I do have brakes coming up in that car in the rear. 
I need to do that before the next oil change or possibly by the next oil change. And that being said, that will be a DIY video, hopefully in the future, in the you know, a few near months to come, and definitely on a hot day because I don't want to do that on a cold day or a wet, rainy day. I will do that, definitely post a video on that. All in all, ownership, knock on wood, I would say, knock on wood, <laughs> I would say that it's been a decent car, very reliable, no major repairs, thank goodness, no issues with transmission or engine, everything's been smooth up to this tune-up portion, which is standard maintenance, and the thermostat and the water pump, electric water pump is standard routine maintenance, I think, because, and like any other car, even a car that has a, a, a belt-driven water pump is the same thing. Those things go over time, the seals go, whatever the situation is. No matter which way you look at it, electric or manual with the serpentine belt doesn't make a difference. It usually goes, you got to change your serpentine belt about every 60,000 to 70,000 miles, let's say. So it's pretty much the same thing. This car, you don't have to change the serpentine belt. All you have to do is... When you do the serpentine belt, you got to change pulleys. But that's a separate thing in itself because the pulleys are plastic. But that's the cool thing about it not being attached to the water pump because the water pump's electronic with an electronic module attached to a harness that tells the system to, hey, let's circulate the coolant so that the car doesn't overheat. So that being said, it's at least eh, whatever way you like it, it's, you know, it's, it's whatever. You know, there's cars nowadays that have all the newer technologies. They're starting to come out with the cars with the no serpentine belt accessory with the little hybrid engine that it has or hybrid electric motor that it has for like the new Mercedes AMGs and all that stuff. So technology as it advances, it is what it is. It's basically the same concept. It's just you got to deal with things in a different way than you would normally do in a manual or regular serpentine belt um, you know schematic of a the where the water pump would be and how things would work that way because a belt driven water pump is no different wear and tear wise than an electric one because I could tell you a story when I had a 2006 Camry I remember the car was brand new it only had about 20,000 or 22,000 miles and the water pump went so you can never predict anything doesn't really make a difference whether a motor's electric or manual they can both go at any given time it could be a bad electric motor and it can go in 20,000 miles who knows or it could be a good one and last 100,000 miles you never know parts give at any given moment you can't predict none of them all you can do is prevent the maintenance and just do the maintenance preventative maintenance to help your car stay healthy and stay reliable for you that being said, on to the topic of M5, I've really been excited and really have been searching over the years for an M5 E60 because I really think that car is a car that will never be repeated in history anymore. It was a car that was, not too many people really realize this or know this, that that engine was never meant for the E60, that M5 engine was supposed to be a totally different engine but the problem was that in those year in that year I believe if I'm not mistaken M5 was not supposed to even receive that V10 engine but the problem that happened was that BMW was entering Formula 1 racing so they developed this engine for the Formula 1 racing team and they basically this whole technology was supposed to go for the Formula One chassis or whatever they wanted to develop for that Formula One race. So that being said, it ended up canceling somehow. Form something happened where, I don't know, the contract didn't go through or something backed out. All in all, it got canceled, the whole situation of them entering the Formula One. And this engine, they got stuck with this design engine. And they had a, a few, they had a lot of them at the time. So they didn't know what to do, so they just pushed it into the M5 
that came out in 06 or 05 because the it always comes uh, the M5 always comes out a year after the original 5 series body comes out so this E60 chassis I believe started in 04 so the first M5 was either 05 or 06 but it shows some places that there's 05s but I haven't seen many 05 M5s maybe there wasn't that many produced well, that being said, this V10 was never supposed to go in these vehicles. So there will never be another V10 in these BMW M5s at all. And no matter what you do, that history will never repeat itself. That will be a legendary car for the life of it. And I do believe in the future it will increase in value. And a lot of them even on the market today are very high priced a little overpriced if you don't if if you if, if you ask me and it's a little exaggerated because the u.s market is very high for used vehicles compared to other countries for some reason i don't know why cars hold a, this much value in america it's not really this exaggerated in europe or any other country like that maybe some middle eastern countries yes because of sanctions and embargoes and all that stuff but in a regular country that's, you know, like England or Germany, these cars don't hold value like that at all. And I've read between the SMG and the manuals and the six-speed and this and that. Honestly, yes, it's more fun to, fu to drive the six-speed. There's different pros and cons in each. You can always get an SMG and convert it to the manual because the gearboxes are the same. All it is is one has an electric controlled the SMG is electronically controlled but you do have to drive it like a manual what this this is what people don't understand is that the SMG was never meant to be driven like an automatic the SMG was meant to be driven like a manual because it is a manual it's just an automated manual that's all it is so when you're at a red light you're not supposed to leave the thing in drive because you're having the gears and constant parts move for no reason and that's more wear and tear on the transmission you have to treat the car like a clutchless manual which it is it's a clutchless manual you gotta f1 you gotta use you gotta use it like a manual that's just clutchless you gotta treat it like a manual that's clutchless because if you treat it like it's an automatic because the thing doesn't even have a park position the park position is putting it in neutral and pulling up the e-brake like you basically would do with a standard six-speed manual transmission. So what you need to do is treat these SMGs like a manual, and that's how they wouldn't break down as fast. So if you use the car and you constantly put it in D or, or drive mode and you want it to go automatic for you, that's the reason why a lot of these SMG pumps are going bad is because it's constantly working and you're using this car like an automatic which is never meant to be driven that way or never meant to be used that way to properly use it use it as a manual and believe it believe in it as a manual because that's the way it will only work and that's the way it's meant to be driven so that being said i definitely am looking for one and i really have seen a few that are amazing and I want to just get into the market for that car. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about that. Is it a good choice? I definitely do want to get it because I know in the future, within maybe the next 5 to 10 years, it will definitely appreciate in value. And it's a fun car to drive. I'm not saying for it to be a daily, something like a weekend's car, uh, head turner, show stunner, stuff like that. Uh, definitely will be a beautiful thing to have and to add on to the collection well that being said this is the end of the discussion in the driveway for this series and hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend it's a sunday night here in new york it's around 10 p.m and hope you enjoyed the video smash that like button if you did consider subscribing and what do i tell you all every day is that each time I tell y'all, no matter what car it is you drive, no matter what car you guys own, use, lease, whatever, you need to maintain them every day. Peace!